The linked list class is one of many classes in the collections framework that implements an interface called queue. These classes typically are used for first in, first out, or FIFO sorts of operations. They all support these methods listed in the grid shown here. You can insert, remove, or examine objects within a queue. To insert, you can call add or offer. To remove, you can call remove or pull. And to examine, you can call element or peak. The difference between the methods in the second and third columns is that if one of the methods in the second column fails, it will throw an exception. Whereas if you call a method in the third column and it fails, it will just return some special value and won't need exception handling. I'm going to show you how to peek at an object and how to pull an object and show you that when you peek, you're getting a reference to the object but not removing it from the queue. But when you pull, you're both getting the reference and removing it from the queue at the same time. And to demonstrate this, I'll use the linked list class, which I've shown in a previous video. In this version of my project, I've added four instances of various olive objects to the queue. And then I'm displaying their order using my own custom display method. I'll run the code, and I see that I have a Ligurio, a Piccoline, a Golden, and a Kalamata olive in that order. And now I'm going to get a reference to one of the olives by calling the list objects peak method. Notice I can call peak, peak first, or peak last. In this context, with this particular type of list, if I call peak or peak first, I'll always get a reference to the first object. But because peak was in that second column and not the third, I won't be removing the object from the list. After I call the peak method, I'll then call the olive object's olive name property and call its toString method. I'll save and run the code, and I'll see the last item is the name of the object that was first in the list. It shows up here when I'm looping through the list, and here again when I output the peak result. Now I'll go back to the code, and I'll call display list again. And I'll see that I'm peaking at Ligurio, but after I call the peak method, all of the objects are still in the list. Now I'll go back to my code, and this time, instead of calling peak, I'll call pull. The pull method both returns a reference to the object and removes it from the list. And again, just like peak, you can call pull, pull first, or pull last. For the linked list, pull first and pull will do the same thing. I'll run my code again, and now I see that the first time through the list, I output the four olives, then I output the name of the olive that I pulled, and then when I run the list again, I only have three objects. The object that was added in the first position of the list, known as the head of the list, has been removed, and it's been returned at the same time. So you can call the peak and pull methods and all of the other associated methods of the queue interface from any of these classes that implement the interface. You'll find a list of all the classes that implement the queue interface here. You'll find synchronous queues, priority queues, priority blocking queues, and others called DQ, which is normally pronounced DEC. Explore the API documentation for all of these classes to find out all the different ways that you can manage your collections.